This is Twit. Alan, Los Angeles, you thinking of getting the Galaxy Note 4, Alan? Yes. Hello, Leo. Hi, Alan. Long-time listener, long-time fan, actually. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and so I'm looking at, actually, between the two, we're looking at the Galaxy Note 4 and, of course, the 6 Plus. Yeah. Now, uh, both being potential 64-bit system, and I'm looking for some more complex functions within the phone. And so I'm wondering, because the Note 4, I'm told, from what I've read, is that it's a 64-bit functioning system except that they've stopped the 64-bit function <laughs> <laughs> well first of all you need to have a 64-bit operating system for this to make any sense at all and android is not yet it will be but it is not yet second i would point out that there that this is meaningless that it doesn't mean anything it is a it's just a checkbox oh it's 64-bit it must be twice as good as 32-bit no just doesn't mean anything. It means you're ready. Yes, you can work with larger chunks of data because you have bigger data registers, and right. it means you can address more memory, more than four gigs of RAM. But you know what? This is getting ready for the day when a smartphone has four gigs of RAM, but nobody does yet. And frankly, right. you don't need four gigs of RAM in a cell phone. The biggest phones have three gigs. The Note has three gigs. I think that's more than adequate. So 64-bit is, is more a selling point, and the, and the only reason Samsung's doing it is because Apple did it last year. Yeah. And the only reason Apple did it is because it sounds good. It, it, you know, I defy anybody to tell me why 64-bit's better. In some cases, 64-bit is worse because you're, you, you're moving more data around. So I, don't worry about the 64-bit. The, probably what you're seeing is the difference between the Exynos processor and the Snapdragon processor. In the U.S., Galaxy phones, Samsung phones, use uh, a Qualcomm processor. In the rest of the world, the uh, Galaxy phones use a, a Samsung Exynos processor. And my guess is the Exynos is 64-bit, but in the U.S., they'll be using the 501 or, some, or 801. I'm not sure what they're using. And that is, uh, that is I don't think, 64-bit yet. Let me check. Uh, yeah, they're going to use the octa-core Exynos processor outside the U.S., so mm. that uh, that's probably mostly what you're seeing is you saw the the n in international s sales announcement, you know that the Samsung party announcement, and they you know they said we're going to be 64, but what they really meant was the uh, the Exynos will be 64. I'll have to say I've seen benchmarks um, on. In fact, you should. Where was it? Apple Insider. I think it was Apple Insider. Benchmarks six plus versus the Note four. Note yeah. 4 doesn't fare well because it's moving so many more pixels. It's got a much higher resolution screen. And I, this is another example of having such a big resolution screen is a checkbox in the spec you know, wars. We saw this happen in the PC market. It was a bad thing where if you had more checks, you know, in the PC magazine review, they do a grid and they'd have more checks. This antivirus had more checks. People bought it. The problem is we got these bloated, giant programs so they'd have all the checkboxes. You didn't need them, but it sold software. Now we're seeing the same thing, I think, with uh, smartphone specs. So what? You don't need 64-bit. You don't need QHD. Go for, go for the phone you want. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.